So you may remember a few weeks ago I made a barn door tracker out of plywood and B&Q hinges and although it works perfectly fine I haven't been best impressed with how well it looks. So for example you've got this sort of butchery and it's made out of B&Q plywood so it's always splintering and bits of coming off. So I spent the past few weeks 3D printing, designing and then 3D printing a plastic version. Now the 3D files for this design are on Thingiverse, so if you want to search it up under Refreshing Views, and I'll put a link uh, in the description. And I'll also write a full description on my blog with a bit of materials. So here is everything laid out on the workbench, ready to put together. And it's used the same design as before, all the dimensions are the same. If you look closely down here, things are all nicely, neatly laid out now. And the other thing I have done is got rid of the fairly rubbish ball head mount and then bought a nice ball head mount. So before we start the assembly I'll just talk you through the parts. This is the tripod plate so that's what's going to be carried on top of the tripod and that will have a little quarter by 20 bolt that is the same as the camera tripod and that fits in there we'll epoxy that down. The motor is going to mount on here and that's the hole for the threaded rod. This is the camera plate, so this is what the camera is going to stick on. Now I've already epoxied on the 51 degree plate, so that's the same for my latitude, and a 3 8 bolt, which is the same, which is the same thread as the ball head mount. So that's what the tripod sits on, and that is for the finder shoe and the two little screws, that's what screws into there. And then that's where the curved rod, which you'll remember from the last video, so that's the curved rod, that's what the motor, that's what the mount drives along, and it uses those two gears driven by the motor and its two bolts. So that's the bearing assembly there. They're just skateboard bearings uh, traveling on that M8 threaded rod. It took, oh, I think about 20 hours to print these off. I'm not printing very fast. So you're also going to need some PTFE tape to ensure a tight fit as we assemble the parts, we'll need some epoxy to bond things together. We're going to need wiring for the motor, solder, heat shrink. We need some small wire cutters and small screwdrivers. Okay, so let's move along to the manufacturer. We'll put some PTFE tape around the gear so we can get a nice tight fit over the motor shaft. Next thing to do is pop the bearings in, so you should just push fit in. One on each side. And then grab the finder shoe, grab the two little screws, they shouldn't just screw straight through and into the plastic itself. So we want to get a good tight fit on the threaded rod as it goes through the top plate. So wrap some PCFE tape around it and then pass it through, pop the acorn nut on and then tighten up with the other M6 nut. Pass the M8 bolt through the bearings, through the, through the hinge. Don't forget to put the washer on as well. tighten up at the other end. I realised after I recorded this I haven't fitted the black plastic handle so that you'll see that later on. So 
So you want to knit that up so it's it's tight, so it's pretty steady, but not too loose, so that at least the hinge can move freely, but without too much backlash or wobble. Then grab the gear that's going to go onto the threaded rod, the one with the epoxy nut in, and then pass that onto the threaded rod. The tricky part is meshing the gears together. You need to undo the motor so that it can freely pivot. So this is the electricery section. It's all powered off a 12 volt main supply and I'll get round to one day getting a proper 12 volt supply for use in the field. But while I'm just testing it in the garden, that's absolutely fine. The power comes in up through here. It has a switch on and off and that powers a 12 volt voltmeter. Uh, that's got USB connections as well, so I can run dew heaters or I can charge my phone or whatever. Now, if you remember, this is a 12 volt, one RPM motor. That's what it's specified anyway. It's not running at one RPM. So I then got a voltage regulator, a 12 volt PWM, and that takes the voltage in there, chops it up, and then gives the voltage. And doing my time trials, I found that 10.3 volts is actually what's given me one RPM and that's controlled via the twiddly knob, carefully calibrated twiddly knob. So I've measured the output voltage, the voltage goes to the motor, it's 10.3 volts and what I was hoping was that this will be sensitive enough to measure the chopped voltage that's going out to the motor but it's not, it's, it's for a car battery so I presume it, it's quite good at averaging or measuring the peak. So I'm going to use that one to measure the health of the battery or the power supply and then I'm waiting for a voltmeter, fingers crossed, that will actually give me that sensitivity to measure the output voltage that goes to the battery. And then all I have to do, if it's cold, batteries are cold or the batteries are getting flat, is twiddle the, the twiddly knob. And then I know I'm getting my 10.3 volts to drive the motor up one RPM. And on the final point to mention as well, of course, this is all going in a nice project box. This is just in bits at the moment so that I can work on this and at least have a functioning system while I wait for all the parts to arrive. So it looks like it's going to be clear tonight at long last. So I'll set the tracker up. First thing I'll do is put the tripod plate into the little hole, into the nut, and then just tighten that down. and I keep the black handle towards myself and put that on the tripod. Flip her in, I'll put the electronics just there. All head mount simply screws on. It's tight. So it's Connect up the power supply. And obviously I'll have to run an extension cable out for this. So that's roughly pointing due north. And that plate there is level. So I know we're roughly polar aligned. So the last thing I need to do is to take you, the camera, sitting on that tripod, take you off there and put you on there. So I've just come up to the top of the garden so it's just coming up to about midnight now. The sky is still pretty blue. Uh, brighter stars are visible, the constellations are visible, but nothing else. There's also a really fat full moon. So we just had a sort of half an hour now just watching it drift by the trees. We wait for it to get dark. I've set the camera up now. We're doing one minute exposures. I've had to put the ISO right down to 100 just because otherwise it's completely overexposed. So I'll take, I don't know, 10, whatever, just see how they come out. 
It was such a pleasure just to watch the moon drift past the trees. It was warm, lovely summer's evening. And then as it got dark, I then switched across to Outer, the Bright Star and Aquila the Eagle and enjoyed watching it track past the tree. Unfortunately in the small hours, and it's pretty late, I then kicked the tripod. So rather than do any more pictures with that bright moon, with the tripod misaligned, I patched it up, called it a night, ready for waiting for those longer nights to come back later this later in the year. So as always, please subscribe and I'll bring you more videos as we explore the night sky.